but what an adventure in Moremi, hey? Right, so you might have noticed there's a completely different trailer on the Land Cruiser and it actually isn't. It's the same Echo 5 I had before, but it looks completely different. So this is a video to explain what I've done to the Echo 5 to make it perfect for my overlanding needs. Welcome back to the channel. My beloved Echo 5 was looking really battered after the last 75,000 kilometers of rough travel. So it was definitely time to give it some TLC. I have to disclaim that this entire rebuild was not in partnership with any brand and was fully paid for by myself and it is a costly exercise but boy is it worth it. Right so we are here at the beautiful Baines Baobabs campsite number two and it is 50 degrees Celsius so if I mumble, stumble will fall down completely on this one I do apologize but let's go through what I've changed on the Echo 5 and why and, and has it worked or hasn't it worked uh, it's not going to be an in-depth thing if you want to see an in-depth review on the Echo 5 itself and the previous setup I had on it please head to the video in the description it's a full-on in-depth review of the previous setup uh, I did it last year and I love that setup I really did but this one behind me is just perfect in my opinion for what I need so I'll run you guys through it right so in essence it's exactly the same trailer it is an Echo 5 off-road trailer from Echo 4x4 Center and the reason why I changed it look it was really looking a bit worse for wear after all the hard overlanding trips the last time I came back from the Kalahari there was some serious damage to it I mean it's done a lot of work it's worked really hard and it's been brilliant so I decided let me overhaul it and make it more suited to my needs and what that would also allow me to do is take a lot of weight off the vehicle because most of the time I tow anyway so let me take most of the weight out of the vehicle and move it to the Echo 5 I started by adding the iCamper Sky Camp 2X I'm not going to run through the tent in detail there is a review up on my channel I'll also link it in the description below on this tent it's my favorite rooftop tent honestly it's just unbelievable that was the start already before I overhauled it completely before the Botswana trip up to Moremi and Chobi I put the iCamper on three front runner load bars that are loaded on the top bin here it's a really simple solution that works really well and then before the Kalahari trip I added the 270 degree awning now the 270 degree awning is the one from Echo 4x4 it's the smaller one it's not the plus the reason I went for that one is cost it is in my opinion the best value for money awning on the market I think there are better awnings out there but this one just suited my budget and value for money is unbelievable I think it's a brilliant awning the brackets are fantastic it's obviously a gray one so it's really really cool as cool as an awning can be out there in the heat got all the support legs 
and you don't have to strap it down but i strap it down using the wild dog outdoor kit and what's really nice is if you remember in my last echo fire review there's a kit with 10 pegs and 10 ropes well this other kit from wild dog outdoor has got four ropes and four pegs so it's perfect for this awning because there's four legs so i'll also use that it's a really really good solution just in case that wind comes up in the night while you're sleeping inside your tent right now the first change you'll notice is a color change now while i like the i think it's called olive green of the old echo 5 that's the original color i wanted something more suited that wouldn't show as many scratches would be a bit cooler more suited to what would look behind the land cruiser i'm not a big one for looks but if i was overhauling it anyway might as well change the color i've gone for a, it looks white but it's actually a very very light gray i think they call it dove gray or something like that it is a really really nice color holds up well out here in the bush is a little bit cooler and i think it looks absolutely mint so they resprayed the whole trailer but you'll notice up front here a big change the new nose cone the original nose cone it worked it had so many different features like you could store lots of different things inside of it i mean i can't even go through the list but this one is amazing why because look at these changes it's got the jerry can brackets up here so it's a bit further back it's not right on the sides it is a bit high up but I can siphon straight from here to the 200 so I don't even have to lift them out and to lift them up there is just so easy it's a proper strong bracket so there's two 20 liter jerry cans over here now here is the wood rack I can put we've put 10 bundles of wood or you can probably put 13 bags of wood up here I've got the front runner stretch it's to strap it down really nice wood rack area something I really use often either to store my sea gear ground sheet or the wood but that's not it have a look at this both sides has got a door that you open both sides have got a canvas bag a gray one and in here you can either store a 90 liter fridge up to a 90 liter fridge or look what I've got So I've just got my hose pipe here for filling up the trailer. All the stuff for uh, filling up the car with diesel. And then have a look at this. This is a 95 liter box, rugged box from Skitch, South Africa. Now it just opens like this. But all my dry food, drinks, water goes in here. This space is unbelievable. I mean, I've stored, what, 16 days worth of food and drink in here. Lockable, dust tight, water tight. It goes in here. I strap it down on this nice slide. And you know what? If I wanted to carry two fridges, because it's still got the original 81 and a half liter Snowmaster back here. If I wanted to store another 90 liter in here, 81 and a half, I could still do it. How great is that? You can put anything in here. This really, really works well for me, though. All my dry stuff goes in here. You'll also notice with the nose cone that the old wash basin is gone. It used to clip into the side, that side. The wash basin just clips into here. How amazing is this? Just clip it out like that. And you just hook it in like that. Your drying rack and your wash basin come here. Essentially the same setup as before, just from the front. What I do notice though, is it's a much better height. You're not leaning, not straining your back. A much better height. So taps come out the front here with this black um, checker plate uh, powder coated black checker plate yeah what a win right so at the rear area not much has changed I've still got the original stabilizers which still work great with the ratchet strap but I found in the really undulated campsites it can battle sometimes to really get the trailer completely level because it is a strap and they haven't really made the strap long enough so if you are going into echo and have the original stabilizers make sure the straps long enough or you can get these fitted these are from a company called alco echo do fit them i haven't got them set up now because this campsite is nice and level but when it's not level i use these so you just pull it out and then you'll lower it up to the point where you need it and then you just use a wheel spanner to jack it up and they say you're not supposed to use it to jack up the trailer completely but I think you can. Like in an emergency situation, if you needed to get the wheel off, you could use these in combination with the old ones to jack it up and change a tire. Super easy, simple to use. 
So the wheels and tires. Now I really didn't have to upgrade the wheels and the tires. Those previous ones were okay, no problems. But I decided to for a couple of reasons. One is, first of all, it's unfortunate that you can't fit the same size tire and rim on the on this Echo that you can on the Land Cruiser. It's just too big. The wheel arch, it would catch the wheel arch. So I went as big as you can possibly go, which is a 265. 6517. Now that's a very common size here in South Africa uh, on the Fortuners, Hiluxes, so you can find a tire anywhere. That was one of the reasons, if anything does go wrong. Uh, the second reason, I wanted a rim with an offset that would pull it closer to the offset on the LC200, purely because of dragging the um, trailer through the thick sand. So I went for, believe it or not, they are black rims, but uh, driving in Moremi changed the color. They are the A-Line Daggers, uh, Outback Daggers from A-Line. They look great, eh? That's one of the reasons, not the main reason. I don't really do anything for looks, but they do look really, really good. And I've changed to the Cooper Discoverer ST Max, which is the same tires that I've got on the 200. And what a difference, eh? I couldn't believe the difference that upgrading on tires, making bigger tire, and also the same tire that I got on the 200, how the performance would change. It's a completely different trailer eh, behind the car. So yeah, 265-6517, A-Line Daggers, Cooper ST Max, a great combo. Another big change I made on the trailer, which I spoke about doing in the last review, was adding the rear bin slider to the Echo 5. Now, while I do lose a bit of space from the floor, what a game changer, eh? I can now slide the entire bin out. So everything just goes in there. Food, drinks, tables, chairs, cooler boxes, whatever you need. I mean, it's just unbelievable. More clothes, I don't know. You can slide a big glass solar panel underneath, but that's where I put my flexo powers. You can put a bigger table in there. It's a seriously heavy duty, large slider, hey? What a game changer. If you have an Echo 5, or you're going to get one, get it fitted or order it with the rear bin slider. It's a game changer. I also got two cargo rails put on the side so I can tie everything down. What a win, eh? What a win. I'm not going to show you at the moment how I've mounted the 270 degree awning purely because it's a temporary fix. Look, it works, but it's not great. We are working and developing, Echo 4x4 and myself, on a great system to lift your 270 because the problem is when you're driving, you want it low enough to not catch the trees and everything. But when you want to set it up, you don't want to be hitting your head on it the whole time. So you want to lift it to just that comfortable position. This system, like I said, works, but we are working on a, a pretty great system to lift it. I know there are other brands like Metallion trailers that have an excellent system on lifting the awning. Seriously, that's definitely the best I've seen. Uh, Metallion trailers are doing a great job on that. But yeah, the 270, what a game changer. So much... Look, it doesn't provide as much shade, but so much quicker than the previous setup. It's just from start to finish, maybe 10 minutes, including the ground sheet, this Echo 5, which is a game changer for what I do. You know, I've got some one-nighters, some three-nighters, some four-nighters, and what I used to have to do is carry the Skycam Mini on top of the car with that big tent on the Echo. More weight, more drag. So right now, I just, if I want to go car camping, then I just put the Skycam Mini on the car. But trailer, I've got the perfect solution here. So yes, it's not, n I mean, the tent itself is comfortable, but it's not that big house that I used to have before. So if you're planning on spending four nights at each place, then that's the setup to go for. Go for the big Echo 4x4 tent. But in 10 minutes, I can have this up or down. I also carry my lithium triple five, little battery pack for backup power. <laughs> you always need backup power out here in the bush when things go wrong, or when it's hot like this, you always need to charge stuff. It battles to charge in this heat. Uh, but the two AGM batteries and the old Echo 5 charging system I got just works. Uh, but yeah, definitely going to upgrade it to Victron and Lithium. I've also upgraded the shock absorbers from, I think it's, they used to be Gabriel Safari shock absorbers to now Monroe. And I wouldn't think I'd notice a difference. I definitely notice a difference. I don't know if I'm getting skewed out a little bit by the tires and the wheels, the bigger, bigger stance, but the shocks, the new shocks definitely work. Eh? So yeah, and they're very affordable. I haven't changed it to independent suspension. That's uh, a big overhaul, very expensive, and yeah, this just works. I haven't had any issues with it, suspension-wise. 
I have also upgraded the solar panel. I used to run with two 150 watt Flexo Power Gen 1 panels and those were great. I really enjoyed them but two panels is obviously more work than one. So I've upgraded to a 240 watt Flexo Power Mojave and yeah it's just one panel and this is the Gen 2 so it's they've made quite a lot of improvements. The performance is amazing. I've obviously got it going into the same electrical system that I used to have in the Echo. Unfortunately, the cost to upgrade that was too much at the time. It is the only thing I'd be looking at improving on this current setup is changing everything to Victron Energy, South Africa's uh, electrical system. I've got it in the Land Cruiser. It's a great system. So ultimately changing to that and lithium batteries will be another upgrade that I'll do and then it'll pretty much be perfect. But I love this panel, eh? 240 watts. Yeah, it keeps the batteries more than topped up, even in this 50 degree heat. Now the ground sheet. I eventually stopped using my old ground sheets. Eh? They never really worked in sand because the sand would come through and collect on the top, nor did they really add any benefit in mud or anything like that. So I eventually started leaving them at home. But then I came across this. It's a ground sheet. This is the medium sized one from a company called Sea Gear. Now the interesting thing about this is first of all it looks great but also the sand that collects on top if you say you walk on the ground sheet falls right through it so it never has any sand collecting on it now that makes it worth it for me look for one or two nights i don't really set it up but the, for the three night stays or four nights or however long i'm going away with my family it's a really really great bit of kit i love this thing so yeah got the sea gear up here at Baines. All these upgrades have allowed me to remove the draw system in the rear of the vehicle and store everything I need in the Echo, thus keeping the 200 series well below its max GVM. The Echo 5 will be featuring in some epic Limpopo and Botswana episodes coming soon. Right, so that is the end of the Echo 5 Reworks walk around. And has it worked? Well, it's difficult to say. For me, it has. Look, the two setups are completely different for different people's needs. The previous setup is great if you've got long stays at certain places and if you're going out with your family. This is great for the one or two nighters and the longer stays it's a compromise you know not as good as the previous one for the longer stays but it still works you know and if i really want to set up the whole thing i even have an eye camper uh, annex room for the 2x so just brilliant i absolutely love what i've done with this thing i think it looks really great as well and yeah if you are interested in doing that thing reach out to echo they've done a they've obviously done this one and they'll be able to do your Echo 5 or Echo 6 or Echo 4 or whatever. So yeah, like I said, the only things I really want to get sorted are the electrical system. Not that it's bad, but I would like to go to Lithium and Victron just to make it more efficient and so I can monitor it very, very closely. And obviously sort out the 278 degree awning lifting bracket. Otherwise, absolutely chuffed, eh? absolutely chuffed. It's worked great on three or four trips now. And this has been a big Botswana one. And every time I take this Echo 5 out there, it is just faultless. It is unbelievable. Seriously, I don't mean to go on about it, but it is just brilliant. A brilliant trailer. And the little changes I've made, 
I think it's made it pretty perfect. Anyways, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next adventure. Cheers. Thank you for watching. In the next episode, I share my experience with the Cooper ST Max tires after 50,000 kilometers of rough overland travel. Until the next adventure, cheers.